How's it going there, True Believers? It's I, Shane, here to give you another Loki Season 2 episode review. Today's episode is Episode 2, Breaking Brad. Eh? But if I go any further, please go ahead and break out and hit that like button. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. Be notified of more videos just like this. I'm catching up. I'm getting, I'm just getting so close. And I'm so surprised I'm able to dodge those spoilers. Although, um... YouTube videos don't help, you know, I, I wish, I sincerely wish that a lot of these, uh, I don't even want to know if I should call them review channels, but they just put up a damn thumbnail, don't think twice about it, I don't even know if the thumbnails even match sometimes, because a lot of times, you know, a lot of times they don't, but I'm not going to find out if the ones I've seen for three even match, I, I'm probably going to, I'm, I'm going to do my best to get to that soon because i actually have some halloween content i've been wanting to put out too but that's neither here nor there remember i told you last week that the that that first step was so so good and the second step is just as good no after credit scene here but this was a <sighs> loki season two is really doing its best to say hey hey guys i'm actually the best show here me it's me i it's it's mm gonna be hard to refute it so i'm gonna try to break it down by points i guess i had my main point up here first but perhaps we'll, we'll let's do the, the lesser point the lesser point is ob or boros has to figure has to make a device to try to get the temporal bundle thing temporal loom to bundle all those timelines better can't get the blast doors open because he who remains um, or temporal aura signature is needed to open it up. As far as we know, that guy is dead. Well, that one is dead. I don't know if you need any Kang to do it. Ooh, I just came up. Now, we know Victor Timely's in this series. Would they get Victor Timely? Could they convince him to come there so they can open it up and save everybody that would be kind of cool right um there's that plot thread there's also the cute bro i was gonna say science bros but it's more of a bromance between casey and our guy obi because he's like the only person out obi wrote the manual on tim uh, on tim pads casey read the entire manual so when mobius and loki and b15 need some help with a tim pad that's been modified it's up to Casey to tell them, no, no, the dude lied. This thing doesn't block transmissions. I can tell you that for sure, but I can't go deep into it. That's great. Um, Casey, for the win as well, because they traced the signal. They were able to find a signal from Renslayer's Tempad. They were able to hear the last message from the Tempad, which is obviously from He Who Remains. She's working with him. Um... I'm purposely not saying a certain part because it ties into the main thorough line here. But is there anything else I'm, I'm forgetting about that part? But it's it's he Casey's doing a good job. Good job, Casey. You annoyed me at first, but that was past you. Past you was annoying. Present you was great. I won't touch on that other part until later. So, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for me to hit you with D tier, E tier, F tier character, Brad Wolf. The former X5 is now Brad Wolf. Now, Brad Wolf, yes, is an actual character. Brad Wolf in the comics, canonically, was an actor who had suffered tons of abuse when he was younger from his parents, grew up to be an actor, we saw the uh, script for Zaniac, who was a misogynist serial killer, a uh, movie character, and says, I'm going to play this guy. He plays this guy. Well, this is the most comic booky comic book origin if I've ever seen one myself, because someone has a lit cigar and tosses it into a box that had residual radiation from the Manhattan Project. Why the hell is it there? Who knows? Especially when he was filming in Chicago at the University of Chicago. I don't think the man did the Manhattan Project have any parts in Chicago. I thought that was literally in Manhattan, New York. But I digress. 
and the radiation explosion hits Mr. Brad Wolf. Now Brad Wolf thinks that he is Zaniac, the character from the script, and starts doing things from the script. But not only that, he gets super strength and he's able to throw energy knives. Kind of cool. Funny enough, him being in Loki kind of fits because if I can go back to my initial my initial look up here his appearances his uh his first appearance and then his death is from thor 319 in 1982 and 1982 is a year baby because that's where sylvie goes and, and the mcdonald's and all that and he's from 1982 to 1986 thor issue 371 where he's shot right but the crazy thing about this explosion so again this is one of the most comic booky comic book things not only does he get the radiation power and he's driven by madness, he's driven by madness because of the demonic entity inside of him that makes him go berserker. What's even crazy is once he dies, it bursts out, becomes vermin, a bunch of rats, bites Jane Foster, she dies. So Thor, with the TVA, go back in time to kill the vermin thing before it's able to kill Jane. It's all connected, baby. And Marvel, mm. I don't even want to call out Kevin Feige. You got a lot on your plate, dog. But, you, you know, the captain is usually the one in charge, right? I love it when we do stuff like this. Brad, his origins is not even not even like the comic at all, which is great because this is a D-tier, C-tier, F-tier, G-tier character that no one should give a damn about. But you changed his origin and brought it back in a very interesting way. I kind of, and Brad... X5 is actually acting very erratic in this uh, episode anyway. So <clears throat> kind of hamming it up too. It's it's pretty cool. Um <clears throat> pardon me. So yeah, that's a lot of a lot of deep cuts here. Deep, deep cuts. Now, obviously Loki and Mobius and B15. B15 and, and that golden dress. Was that golden dress? I think it was a golden dress. She looked very, very nice. Uh they had to capture him. He's in London, 1977. UK obviously for the premiere and I like how Loki I don't know if he, I don't think he enchants a bunch of street alley hooligans I think it's more all of them are him with his magic and his glamour glamour magic and things like that very nice chasing when they're chasing him and the guy he had his tin pad stolen from B15 but he had this little thing that lets him rewind back to a point where he was the chasing was nice um loki's magic so he made his shat the okay it's loki loki sorry and loki two loki shadows grow the loki horns and grab brad by his shadows and it's funny because mobius is going isn't that kind of theatrical not even talking to the real loki the real loki is further to his left i like it i like seeing more of loki's abilities on display i I'm going to let y'all in on something right now. I secretly want the TVA to become the Exiles. If I don't get Exiles by the time we get Secret Wars and Deadpool 3. I kind of want them to be Exiles. I kind of want... What's that guy called? I kind of want the Watcher from What If to come down and be like, All right, I'm in charge of all this now. And we'll make... Uh, what were they called? Were they called Guardians of the Multiverse? We'll make Guardians of the Multiverse and this is all their base. I, I secretly want that to happen. Not secretly anymore. I said it out loud, but I want that to happen. And so they got this guy and interrogating him has proven rough. Now it's funny because Mobius preps B-15 and Loki about it. Like, you know, X-5 is an asshole. So he's going to goad you into these things. Let's keep the question simple. Where's Sylvie? Where's Dox? The Dox is the uh, judge who's an a-hole who's like, nothing changes. We're going to still murder people, even though we know that we could be doing something different. <sighs> Just those type of characters motivations are so stupid to me. So dumb. But I digress. Things do not go the way Mobius intended. Matter of fact, Brad does gold. Um loki a lot tell him you're not the hero dude you're a villain just stick to that you're good at that telling him about all the messed up things he's done especially failed his mother and loki's really loki's intimidation For those of you who are not DD inclined intimidation and persuasion are both charm and loki's charm is at least a 
plus seven because this dude is just standing over him like, yeah, you're right. I am a villain. I'm not trying to be a hero. Where is Sylvie? And he's just Brad's being being the asshole. He's this guy's obsessed with her. It's your pet over here, Mobius. And he's golden Mobius because he's saying all of this is fake. None of this is real. Don't you you know, don't you wonder who you are? You're still doing all of this. And he's pushing his buttons and it gets to Mobius so bad that Loki got to pull him aside, have a conversation with him. And Loki's saying, well, don't you want to see what your life could have been? And Mobius makes a great point. You know, when Loki says it could have been bad, he's like, no, bad. He can take if his life was going bad and then someone kidnapped him, which he says he loves doing the TVA thing. He wants to thank the guy who kidnapped him. No, you don't. But if his life was going good and he got taken, it would be devastating. And it's crazy because B-15, before she got taken, she was having, um, I think she was having dinner with a friend that was going to get married. In Hawaii, like she was having a really good time. So who knows what's going on with Mobius? Maybe the Mobius' past life. He's a dude that owned a sea do and uh jet skis. Which I love that he explained first episode. I don't know if I said it in my review, the jet skis and sea doos, it's like Clinix, right? Clinix is the brand, it's not exactly what the thing is called. I love that. I love that about Mobius. But after they have a little conversation. After they pass, they go to OB. So after they pass off from the OB project and give it to Casey, who says he understands it. Now they know that the Tim pad doesn't block signals. They come up with another idea. He's the god of mischief. So let's use that to his advantage, which Brad also said every version of him always messes up everything, no matter who they brought in there. Hmm. Well, this Loki, who is not prime Loki, but sub prime Loki. Seems to be the best one because he's willing to change himself. I love that about this Loki. This, this, the Loki TV series makes me actually like Loki. Not gonna lie. I think the closest I got, I've gotten to liking Loki this much was uh, Thor Ragnarok. Actually, that, yeah, close to that, really close. So they do Loki, and Mobius have a bit of trickery, make it seem like Loki's going rogue. They have this. Uh, contraption that makes like a temporal box and loki's had the control the whole time hits the button accidentally crunches the seat that uh brad was sitting slash laying on and he gets brad in the box and he keeps shrinking it to impossible size so he gets brad to admit they him and loki and mobius both know a he's he was a top hunter for the tva so there's no way that he didn't find Sylvie. Because Loki said if he found Sylvie, she would have killed him. Unless he found her and went the other way. Right? And Loki can also tell he was lying. So, I love that our characters are smart. It's a thing that... I know some folks would rather the characters be in the dark and then come into light. I like when our characters are smart enough to have hunches and be like, Ha ha! Yes. And they were right. He did find her. And he left. And he wanted to go have... A life. He was holding on to some other information that we'll get to in a second. So, of course, it's so interesting and so much tension when Loki sees Sylvie, which kind of boils. It gets my goat. It grinds my gears. It boils my piss because straight up, he's like, I know I'm the last person you want to see. Yeah, you're right. I'm like, first of all, you kicked him through a time door which more or less you probably are the reason why his body's been you know going spider-verse crazy has been going spider-verse crazy pardon me and you don't want to see him no 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 no. you betrayed him you didn't give him time and he's still forgiving you girl you're on thin ice stop it stop it so he talks to her and I was wondering, I was like, why, what, where was he trying to find her? Was it to ask her, what did she do? Because it's very obvious that she killed him. I figured he would figure that, he, that she did kill him, did kill he who remains the first episode, which seemed ambiguous. But now when she flat out says, well, I'll kill him. He, he's like, well, what if his other variants come? Well, I'll kill them too. Okay. Now we've established that. But he tells her what he saw in the future. He's like, I'm going forward and backwards. And in the future, you were in the TVA and you came to me. 
well, blah, blah, blah. Use your enchantment to read my mind, as we've known. She's more or less the enchantress. I mean, come on. She's blonde hair. She's half Lady Loki, half enchantress. Plus, with the name Sylvie. So it was, I said this in, I said this in my last review in 2021 about who Enchantress Sylvie was. Go back and watch those, please, and thank you. And so she doesn't want Enchant to look through it. She doesn't want anything to do with TV. And Loki's saying, you want all of this, 1982, in her job at McDonald's. Mobius also wants a apple pie. Mobius is a pie man. So you want all this to stay around. TVA is the only way that's going to happen. We're trying to defend things, not prune things, right? And Mobius can notice that Brad is still jumpy. And Brad, he gets Brad to come forth and say what the plan that do docks, docks, which is funny, docks, because doxing is a thing and doxing is bad. Um, the docks has, they are going to destroy every little branch that they can. Uh, Sylvie's able because he's stuttering. Sylvie does her enchantment thing to look in his mind. She knows where it is. It's morphing time for her. She changed her outfit. They go back to the TVA. They know what's going on. Throw Brad through. It's Loki, Mobius, and Sylvie, your favorite trio. I oh man, I I I go. I'm only two episodes in. I know this is only six episode series, but man, just seeing those three together, cool tag team. Cool t trio. Tag teams two trio. And Loki serves as the distraction. They go around the side. While they're act like the um what are they call the renegade hunters, TVA people are blowing up different timelines, and some of them escape, some of them don't. You know, they they're slashing, thrashing, uh, tasering into nothingness, these people. And they eventually, you know, break down the machine, whatever base they were at. I don't I don't even know if I actually wrote down the year for that in my notes. Give me a moment. I did not. I did forget to mention that Sylvie has a green Ford F50. I believe that is a 1950 model. I know she's in 1982, but it looks like it's either the 70s or the 50 model because I remember that blockiness. I digress. They stop her, they lock up these guys, but it is such a grave feeling at the TVA that all of them see that 30% of the branches have been destroyed. Uh, B-15 looks devastated, Loki looks devastated, Sylvie's devastated, they're just, and I love the weight to this. We don't have to see those millions upon billions upon trillions of lives being lost. We can feel the weight in everyone's words. That's great acting and that's, that's, that's great. Especially seeing some of the lines like end early or end in the middle. And I mean, you know that those branches are going towards the end of the time. So ugh, feel bad for those people because that stupid alley oil thing is there. And Sylvie flat out says TV is rotten to the core. It's broken. And this is the best you can do. <clears throat> and Loki is right. There's not much they could have done. They did the best they could. And he tries to get her to stay because he says stay because staying is harder than running. Of course, she runs away. That's what she's good at. Sylvia is quickly annoying the hell out of me again. So, yeah. And we they got a hit on Ravana Renslayer's Tempad. That was what I was going to mention at the, at the end there. So they know where she is. Pretty sure she's gone to the wherever he who remains is with Miss Minutes. They cannot trust Miss Minutes, so I wonder what the hell Miss Minutes is. She seems like a fourth dimensional being that I hope that they can somehow destroy. I wouldn't doubt if she was Phalanx. Huh. X Men fan, you know what the Phalanx are. But yeah, we see we see Sylvie talking to uh, Jack, the young manager that hired her. He says his mom's gonna pick him up. She's got friends and she's loving this life and she's enjoying her time but yeah Loki at uh, Loki Mobius B15 they gotta go get Renslayer the traitor is one who she killed C20 and I don't know who C20 is but she's done a lot of messed up stuff I gotta say the comedy the comedy here is subtle in this in this episode and is not at all inappropriate it comes in best times this is the best of Marvel 
this is a this is again a return to form i um i really do hope things continue to be on this good track i t i'm not gonna say i tend i tend to appreciate most of the things that they do but we had gardens of the galaxy 3 we got loki season 2 episodes 1 and 2 i'm hoping that the middle middle season show uh, episode 3 i'm hoping that does well who knows maybe the marvels might actually be a good movie i mean some people doubt it so hopefully this loki here gets us back on the right track now all i need to do i just i need to see some jonathan majors give me jonathan majors now please and thank you this episode gets a five out of five from me Mwah. i enjoyed it so much every character was being their character continuity from season pass <sighs> depending on how this series ends you could probably keep going with loki if you wanted to Depending on how this season is, just don't don't kill Mobius, please. Don't kill Mobius. You can kill Casey. Kill Casey. Bye, Casey. Don't kill Mobius, please. Five out of five. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, please. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be notified of more videos like this, guys. Thank you for taking some time out to listen to me talk about Loki season two. I appreciate each and every last one of you. Please be good. Be blessed. Wash those hands. Drink you some water. Be good to yourselves. Be good to others. Either way it goes, don't be a jerk, all right? Make sure that if you're feeling down and out, you reach out to someone, you talk to somebody. There are people who would rather talk to you today than to miss you and mourn you tomorrow. So please, don't give up. And as a matter of fact, my social media is in the description below. Follow me. Hit me up. Send me a message. Say hi. Don't be a jerk. And I know I will get to you ASAP. Well, until next time, I mean, next time's going to be very soon because I, I, I got to get to episode three. I got to get to episode three fast. So I'll see you guys next time. Excelsior.